In the last video, we set up an event. Now we're going to set up some ticket types within that event. If you haven't watched this video, please go back and watch it now, because otherwise this won't make sense. So we're in our event, and we just want to click Event Ticket Types. And we're going to set up two different ticket types, one for members and one for non-members. And we're going to restrict the members ticket so that only our members can access it. So to start off with, we're going to create the non-members ticket because that's more simple. Now leave bulk tickets blank and always leave the availability as both. Even if you want to stop selling the ticket, you use a different option for that. So our price for non-members will be £5 and we'll probably sell the members ticket for a slight discount at let's say £4. And it's really important that you don't pay any fees at this point because the Students Union pays this for you. So it's a really big advantage of using this platform. The nominal code, as always, it just routes the money through to your society's bank account. Talk to your treasurer more if you're not sure what this is. And the maximum number allowed to sell needs to go back, if you remember when we set up the, the maximum attendance in the event itself. So we put it as 40 there and we're going to sell 15 of those as non-members tickets and 25 as members tickets. So we're, again, making it an advantage to buy membership. And in the ticket description, we're just going to emphasize that this is a non-members ticket. And we might even want to say, please buy membership to receive discounts or extra chances to get onto this event if it's really packed out. Now, again, remember that you can set up a ticket type with all the information that we've just submitted. You don't have to do anything to do with advanced options, but we're going to take a look. Again, cost center code should be left as blank and leave guest pass as it is. VAT exempt should always be ticked. And if later on we want to stop sales of this particular ticket type, we can do that by checking this box, but we're going to leave that blank for now. Start date and end date can be a really useful way of managing which tickets are available at which time. So for example, if you've got a really big event and you want to encourage people to buy tickets, you might want to set up an early bird ticket that goes offline at a certain date, for example, two weeks before, so that you get lots of people excited about the event and buying tickets early. But we're going to leave that blank for now. You can fill it in in the normal way to fill in dates that we've done in the previous video. So you just select a date and then a time using this option to just scroll through and select it as PM or AM. But we're gonna leave that blank for now. The maximum number of tickets a user, a user can purchase can be either 10, we normally leave it as 10, but you might wanna restrict this to only one or possibly two if it's a really packed out event. Particularly if you're selling summer social ticket tickets, it's very important to make sure that you've had a thought about this um, so that one person isn't buying all of them. Now the user group is what we're gonna to use to restrict it to members in the other ticket option. We're gonna leave that blank for now so that anyone can buy our non-members ticket. So we're just gonna scroll back up and click save event ticket, event ticket type. And it's just gonna make sure that we've double checked all our figures, which we have, particularly the price. So if we click at the top and just have a look at which tickets we've set up, we've set up our non-members ticket. So now we're just gonna set up our members ticket. Again, leave that blank, and we're just going to put a reduced price for members. Nominal code and maximum amount allowed to sell is as before, so 25, and then we put 15 for the other one, so we've added up to our maximum, which we put when we set up the event itself, which was 14, if my maths is correct. So, something like that should go in there. And then again, we could leave it as is, or, in this case, because we're going to limit it to members only, we need to go down to the user group. Now, this can get quite complicated, so I'm going to explain it as simply as I can. The first thing you do is search the name of your society, because what this essentially does is searches all the different possible groups that you could restrict the ticket to. So, there's lots of different options that will come up, and you'll see things like Trip to the Peaks or events or anything like that. And what you're looking for is one that just says group at the end of it. So you've got the name of your society, you've got group, and you've got three different options, alumni, administrators, and current members. So the administrators are people that have access to your dashboard, so nearly always committee. Alumni are obviously old members, 
but we want to restrict it to current members. So we just select this option. And now once we save the ticket type, no one but people that are currently members of our society will be able to even see this ticket. And then a big thing to remember is that you need to be logged into the Students' Union website if you have got a membership so that you can see it. Otherwise, the system doesn't know who's a member and who isn't a member. You have to log in using your normal student ID or the account that you've created. So we're going to go back up and just click Save Event Ticket Type. Double check that the price is right. And bingo. So as you can see, we've created a non-members ticket and a members ticket with different prices. Now we're just going to have a look at that from the other side. So using our tags that we set up on our event, it immediately comes up with our and you can see that there's now an option to book our ticket. So there's a non-members ticket, but because we're not a member of the society, we can't see the members ticket, but it is there if you're logged in and you've paid your membership. You can see the amount of tickets that's, that are remaining. If we'd selected the option, you wouldn't be able to see that. You can see the times and dates and where it's leaving from as well. So you've got everything you need to know, the description's there, and your members can easily access these events from wherever they are on their phones, on their laptops, 24 hours a day. So you'll get a lot more sales.